Hello friends, this is a geography video. In this geography video today, we'll study about Kaveri River and its basin. There are many approaches to study geography. One approach to study geography is to take an event, to take an aspect, say for example this Kaveri River and study just the factual aspects of the Kaveri River. Maybe for example the length, the tributaries, how they are existing, just to focus our attention on studying only the river. This is aspect number one of studying geography. The second aspect of studying geography, study that river in toto, to study that river in all possible dimensions. For example, Kaveri River, its tributaries, the projects what are all existing in the tributary, if any sanctuary is existing, then political aspect also we will study and also we will try to understand about the cultural aspect of the river as we study the river. The more dimensions you give to study any aspect, the more dimensions you give to study a yeah, thing, it remains in your memory for a larger duration of time. So that effort we are handling in this class. In this video, we are going to adopt the approach of trying to introduce more dimensions in studying one single aspect. So let us go into the slides. So this is a Kaveri River Basin. You see the whole basin I have drawn, we have used this whole basin. Just look at this basin, then we will try to understand some basic features about this Kaveri River. These are the basic features about the Kaveri River. The origin of the river is in a place which is called Talkaveri. This is in Karnataka and this Talakaveri is present in Kur district. This river meets the sea in Bay of Bengal at a place which is called Kaveri Pumpatinam. Please note in this slide, there is a Kur coffee which I had added as an additional point because Kur district we are using here, that is a place where Kaveri river origins, Kurg is associated with coffee, so just note this also. And also similarly, Kurg had applied for Kur coffee as a GA tag in the year 2018. And the length of the river is 800 kilometers. This Kaveri River is considered as the Ganges of South. Kaveri Basin covers three states and one union territory. The Kaveri River covers the three states which include Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and the union territory of Pondicherry. This river basin has a forest cover of approximately 19 percentage. The major crops which are cultivated in the basin happens to be paddy, sugarcane, ragi, jowar, etc. And this river basin is currently modern days it is used for ecotourism activities also. So let us try to see the tributaries of this river Kaveri and just I will mention these tributaries we will speak a bit elaborately in the subsequent slides. So this is a tributary which is called Arkavati which is a left bank tributary of Kaveri. Then we have Simsha, then we have Hemavati, then we have Kabini and we have Bhavani, we have Noyal, Amravati etc. These are the tributaries of Kaveri. Now when we see the tributary, these tributaries can be classified into left bank tributary, right bank tributary. How we have to understand whether a tributary is left bank or right bank is you have to travel with the direction in which the river is flowing. So when you flow along with the river, whatever tributary joins the river is considered to be the left if it is in the left side if it is joining and any other tributary which is coming and joining in the right hand side is considered to be the right bank tributary. So let us understand the tributaries. So one tributary is Hemavati which is left bank tributary. This is the largest of the tributary. Just you know one more additional point about this Hemavati river and that is Hassan city is located in the banks of Hemavati river. The other tributary is Simsha. Simsa joins Kaveri river in a place which is called Siva Samudra and there is an another tributary which is called Arkavati. This Arkavati flows through Bangalore. We have some other right bank tributaries also. An important right bank tributary is Kabini and this Kabini, it is on this Kabini tributary that a Kabini dam had been built and there is another tributary which is called Bhavani and this Bhavani flows through Silent Valley National Park. And we have another tributary which is called Noyel. This river had uh, come in uh, newspaper very recently because of the increased number of pollution. This river is flowing in Tirupur. And we have another river which is called Amravati which also is a right bank tributary. Next we will try to understand, we will try to study 
the cities which are located on the banks of river kaveri while studying the cities will try to understand the features of the cities personalities associated with the cities so that we remember a lot of data associated with the river kaveri these are the cities which will be studying in short sri rangapatnam mysore mandya metur erod karur tiruchi tanjavur kumbakonam puhar these are some of the cities will be trying to understand let's go one by one so sirangapatnam is a first major city in an important city which is located on the bank of river kaveri you must know sirangapatnam is an historical city this city happens to be the capital of hyderali and tipu sultan when hyderali and tipu sultan ruled they made sirangapatnam as a capital and in sirangapatnam today what exists is the fort all the features the picture we have given it is all existing in sirangapatnam also remember that in the year 1799 in sirangapatnam the fourth anglo mysore war was fought in this fourth anglo mysore war the britishers defeated mysore and killed tipu sultan and finally they annexed the whole of mysore and they created a small state of mysore and they made that as a principality next also remember that near sirangapatnam we have a bird sanctuary which is called rangan titu bird sanctuary this rangan titu bird sanctuary is referred as pakshi kashi that means it is kashi for the birds and in this bird sanctuary a very important personality salim ali made he had come here in this bird sanctuary and study certain details and during those times he had recommended those rulers who are ruling mysore who happens to be odayar rulers and told that these birds has to be preserved and this place has to be preserved so in this bird sanctuary we have some important birds which come here annually which is painted strokes flying fox and marsh crocodiles also are found in this bird sanctuary also this site is very important for migratory birds let's go to the next city which is called mysore we all know mysore happens to be the capital of the mysore dynasty or the mysore state during the time of the british and this mysore had been ruled by odayar rulers or the dynasty which is called odayar and you must know historically this mysore became a separate state a semi independent later an independent state after the disintegration of vijayanagar empire in the year 1565 Vijayanagar Empire disintegrated in the year 1565 after the Battle of Talikota. Then the hold of Vijayanagar Empire over the southern parts of India had become loosened. So because of this only, Mysore state had emerged as an independent state after this Battle of Talikota in the year 1565. And this Mysore is also referred as the cultural capital of Karnataka. let us try to understand some more features about mysore also so in mysore we have a very important temple which is called chamundeswari temple this temple is very much associated with the ruling dynasty that is odayar dynasty and mysore is also known for dasara festivals and which is widely popular in the state of karnataka many tourists many foreigners they visit this dasara festival here in karnataka and mysore is also known for mysore silk it is a very important variety and mysore silk is known throughout the world and we have another thing which is called mysore paintings that is also significant associated with mysore let's try to see the list of geographical indicated tags associated with mysore this is the list which i have given one i have already told you which is mysore silk then we have mysore paintings mysore sandalwood soap mysore sandalwood inlay mysore betel leaf mysore agarbattis mysore sandalwood oil mysore maligai which is a flower and ganjifa cards this is the image of ganjifa cards which i have given next we'll try to see some personalities associated with mysore these are some of the important personalities which i have taken for our understanding one is rk narayan who happens to be a writer a prolific writer who lived in mysore and he is known for his important works i have just mentioned two works one is sami and his friends another is malgudi days and you must know he is known for creating a city an illusionary imaginary city which is called malgudi and his brother is also renowned cartoonist whose name happens to be r k lakshman and he created a most important uh, image he created a most important cartoon character which is called the common man and he worked in the magazine which is called times of india similarly all would be knowing an important personality who is called n r narayana murthy and is the founder of infosys 
next we will travel to e road along with the river and e road is referred as a turmeric city e road is located in tamil nadu it is a turmeric city and also know that this e road is associated with the birth of e v ra and who is e v ramasami e v ramasami had been fondly referred in tamil nadu as periyar and is a father of dravidian ideology so you please know that e road is associated with him and also we have another uh, recent excavation which is called kodumanal this kodumanal is an important megalithic site recently we have discovered that this site is associated with trade and commerce in ancient india and the trade was done with the romans and this place is kodumanal please remember this question may come in the preliminary examination also e road has got a ga tag for bhavani jamakalam bhavani is just a city located near e road so bhavani is known for this jamakalam so it is a ga tag next we'll move on to karur a place karur is located on the banks of river amravati and it was a capital of chera kingdom in the ancient india and karur has been known from a very long time until very recently for homemade textiles karur had been referred as a textile territory even in the ancient india also now this is known for home textiles karur is also known for paper mill tamil nadu news prints and paper limited is situated in karur karur also is recently witnessing a problem which is called depletion of the river bed due to excessive sand mining so the kaveri river bed had been depleted because of mining mafia and sand had been uh, mined here without government regulations and this has become a huge problem in the recent times and again so we have seen important cities like mysore we have covered then we have seen on the banks of river kaveri we have seen e road also we have seen serangapatinam just north of mysore we have seen next we will we have seen karur also now we will see tiruchirappalli tanjavur and other places also we will see next we will see sri rangam sri rangam is a riverian island which is located near tiruchi sri rangam is known for vaishnavite sect in sri rangam we have a very important temple which is called ranganatha temple this is one of the series of temples which is located in the banks of river kaveri the first ranganatha temple which is located in the banks of kaveri happens to be adi ranga temple which is in sri ranga patinam which i have just spoken so in sri ranga patinam we have a ranganatha temple which is called adi ranga next we have a madhya ranga which is present in shiva samudra a place which is called shiva samudra we have a temple which is called madhya ranga third we have antya ranga in sri rangam sri rangam which i am speaking currently so this is the third of the series of temple which is located on the banks of river kaveri next we will see tiruchi Trichy is also a very important center, and near Trichy there is a place which is called Urayur. This name Urayur is a prehistoric site, or it has been spoken in ancient India itself. Urayur is mentioned even in the Ashokan edicts. Urayur is mentioned in Satavana inscriptions also. You must know Ashokan edicts. I am speaking about a period which is approximately around 300 BC, and Satavahana. I am speaking first second century AD. first second century i am speaking so it mentions it indicates that urayur is a very very old city which is still located near tiruchi and also tiruchi is known for present of a presence of a place which is called kallanai kallanai is a embankment on this kaveri river history says that karigala chola a chola ruler who belongs to the sangam age had invaded sri lanka and uh, enslaved 12000 soldiers and he brought this 12000 soldiers back to chola kingdom and using this 12000 soldiers he had built what is called as kallanai so karigara chola can be traced to 2000 years from now which is approximately the first or second century ad next tiruchi is also known for an important personality who is called sir c v raman sir c v raman happens to be a physicist and he is the person who received nobel prize in the year 1930 he received nobel prize for raman effect and he had been conferred bharat ratna award also in the year 1954 so very important personality please remember that also and in tiruchi we have something which is called bhcl bharat heavy electricals limited that is also present in tiruchi next let us move on to tanjavur Tanjavur is a very important very fertile place it is the delta region of the river kaveri it is considered to be the rice bowl for tamil and this tanjavur had been historically mentioned as a place where so much cultivation was done 
but you must know recently in tanjavur because of scarcity of water there is a decline of agriculture and the agriculture had totally not only declined and totally destroyed just a image i had given you can compare these two images and tanjavur is also a chola capital during the ancient india the cholas the imperial cholas when they ruled they made tanjavur as their capital and in tanjavur we have a very very important temple which is called brahmeshwara temple which was built in the year 1010 ad by raja 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 chola he built this temple which is called brahmeshwara temple and this temple had been recognized as an unesco world heritage site and this temple is a clear representation or a very important representation of dravida style of architecture you can see the whole of vimana is present here in this bradeshwara temple and you must know in this bradeshwara temple the top stone which is existing here the top stone is approximately 70 tons plus and still historians and scientists are amused and amazed how a stone a monolithic stone a granitic stone weighing 70 ton and more has has been lifted to such a great height next tanjavur also has other things to its credit in tanjavur we have some geographical indicated tags tanjavur doll is a very important uh, Uh, doll this is called a dancing doll of tanjavur this is the image of the dancing doll of tanjavur then we have tanjavur art plate which has also got as ga tags then we have tanjavur veena which i had given here this is the veena which is uh, placed in the hands of uh, goddess saraswati and tanjavur painting is also receiving a ga tag and tanjavur painting i am referring as a glass painting and I have given an image of this glass painting also you must know tanjavur is also known for manufacturing bronze statues and this bronze statues had been mo made for more than 2000 years this bronze statues had been made by a technique which is called lost wax method and this lost wax method had been known for a very long time to the indians and most of the statues in tanjavur had been made using this lost wax method next we'll move to a city which is called kumbagonam kumbagonam has got more than 200 temples in itself and kumbagonam is referred as the cambridge of south and there is a place which is called mailadu durai near kumbagonam this place is associated with megalithic cultures megalithic cultures existed approximately 3000 years from now megalithic culture is identified by the use of megalith big stone structures which is existing and uh, next important thing is that kumbagonam is also known because of the birth of a very important personality who is called Srinivasa Ramanujam he happens to be a mathematician recently a movie has been made the name of the movie happens to be a man who knew infinity this question had been asked just one year back you must know so please know these facts also next we will go to a nearby place near kumbagonam which is called gangai konda cholapuram gangai konda cholapuram is also a capital city this capital city had been built by the son of raja raja who is called rajendra he has defeated some rulers who are called as ganga rulers after defeating the rulers in this ganga region or the ganga rulers he came and established this new city which is called gangai konda cholapuram and this gangai konda cholapuram has also got this temple which is called bradeshwara temple in it this temple is also known for its beauty and it's a classical example of dravida style of architecture and nearby there is another temple which is associated with the cholas this temple is located in a place which is called darasuram the name of the temple happens to be airavathiswara temple and this temple is known for numerous images which i have mentioned here these images are unique because if you just hide one side of the image it represents one figure and if we say the other side of the image it represents another figure say for example in this image which i have said you hide the first off you can see an elephant when you find you need hide the second off you can see a bull this is the uniqueness of these images similarly it applies to so many images which has been present here please you google to know more about this place which is called darasuram airavathiswara temple next we will see pichavaram Pichavaram is one of the largest mangrove forest in the world. Pichavaram is located close to Chidambaram. It is because of this Pichavaram forest that when tsunami struck the east coast of India, this part of Tamil Nadu had escaped from the destruction of tsunami waves. Next we will go to Puhar. Puhar is the place where Kaveri river meets Bay of Bengal. Puhar 
is otherwise referred as Kaveri Pumbatinam in ancient India. This city right now lies buried beneath the ocean. This is a very important city in the Sangam time and this is a trading depot in the Sangam time also. Today also archaeological excavations have carried out and uh, they have understood more about the Puhar and the Puhar is an evidence that in ancient India we have made trade with Romans. We have found Roman coins in the vicinity of Puhar. Puhar is also associated with a very important classical Tamil epic which happens to be Silapadi Garam whose main character happens to be Kannagi. Also near Puhar, we have a Danish settlement which is called Trankubar. This Trankubar or in Tamil it is called Tarangambadi is a Danish settlement which was established in the year 1620. And this Danish settlement is associated with uh, the arrival of a Protestant missionary in India whose name happens to be Robert Colwell. This Robert Colwell is the person who had contributed in many ways to development of Tamil literature, Tamil printing press and he is the first person who translated Bible in Tamil. Next we will see the dams and reservoirs which is present in the Kaveri Basin. On the river Hemavati, we have Guru Dam and also Krishna Raja Sagar Dam is also a very important dam which is located across Kaveri River. We have another dam which is called Metu Dam which is also located in Tamil Nadu and we have Kabini Dam, we have Bhavani Sagar Dam, Amravati Dam. All these dams are located in the river of Kaveri and the tributaries of Kaveri. Next we will see something about Krishna Raja Sagar Dam also. This dam was built in the year 1924 and this dam is located in the confluence of river Kaveri with Hemavati and this is a very important source of irrigation and source of drinking water to cities like Mysore, Mandya and Bangalore. This dam was planned and executed by a very important personality who is called M. Visveswaraya. We will see one or two points about Visveswaraya. Visveswaraya happens to be the Diwan of Mysore. He had worked under the Udayar rulers and Visveswaraya was the chief engineer who planned and built this Krishna Raya Sagar Dam and he not only did this, he gave a flood protection system to Hyderabad city. He also constructed the road between Thirumala and Tirupati. For information, he planned the entire Jayanagar layout in south of Bangalore and this Jayanagar layout when it was planned was the largest of its kind in Asia and also he had been credited with contributing in the starting of a bank which is called State Bank of Mysore and he also gave his contribution in starting the Mysore soap factory and he also contributed in starting Mysore iron and steel works. Because of his contribution and work, he had been awarded Bharat Ratna in the year 1955 and his birthday which is the 15th September today has been recognized as Engineers Day. Next we will speak about the Stanley Reservoir. This Stanley Reservoir is otherwise called as Metu Dam which was constructed in 1934 and it is the largest dam in Tamil Nadu. It is an important source of irrigation to the whole of Kaveri Basin. It is a source of drinking water to the districts of Dharmapuri and Krishnagiri. And we have in Metur a power generation system in the Stanley Reservoir. And Metur also houses an industry which is called Malko. Now let us see the falls which are located on the river course of Kaveri. There is a very important falls which is called Siva Samudra Falls. This is approximately 98 meters and it is the second largest falls in India. Largest fall in the sense of volume of water and across this falls only Asia's first hydroelectric plant had been installed. It was installed in the year 1902. It supplied power to Bangalore and KGF Kolar Gold Fields in 1902. We have another important falls which is located which is called Ogenakal Falls. Ogenakal is the place where river Kaveri enters Tamil Nadu from Karnataka. This is a very important tourist uh, destination and this falls is 20 meters high and this falls is a place where we see a gorge which has been formed in the historical past and this place is also a place where carbonate rocks are located and this carbonate rocks are considered to be one of the oldest in the world and we have a Ogenekar integrated drinking water project and as I already told you in the previous slide this project is that one which gives drinking water to Dharmapuri and Krishnakari districts. 
Let us see national parks and tiger reserves in the Kaveri River Basin. We have Nagarhol National Park in Karnataka, Indira Gandhi National Park in Tamil Nadu, Silent Valley National Park adjoining Kerala and Tamil Nadu and we also have Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve in Tamil Nadu and Adamalai Tiger Reserve in Tamil Nadu. See the Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve is uh, located in the tropical dry forest. This Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve is known for tiger, elephant and critically endangered Indian vulture. So please note this point, critically endangered Indian vulture which is present in Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve. Let us see the tribes who are present in the Kaveri Basin. One is Kodavas, they are located in the upper reaches of the Kaveri Basin and they are located in a place which is called Kudugu Hills. Then we have Jannu Kurumbas, then we have Irlas on the way, then we have Palayas. These are the tribes who are present in the river basin of Kaveri. I hope you have clearly understood not only Kaveri River and all other additional points associated with Kaveri River Basin and the cities and the important personalities with the cities. Please like and share our videos. Please give your comments so that it will encourage us to do more videos of this kind. Thank you.